Welcome to the instructional handover video for this Burstner Harmony Line 744. Going around the outside, we're based on a Fiat 2.3 150. We have the folding mirrors. Now this has got mirror guards, which are additional, and they electrically operate from inside, and I'll show you when we go inside. We've got the larger hotel door with the electric step, and we've got the awning with the awning light and the big strip light underneath. All the lockers are accessed using the one key. So you do have two keys, but basically you just put the key in the locker and turn to lock, turn to open. So the first locker is your toilet set. So in here we have a handle which needs lifting up. Slide it out, we remove the little gray cap and press the button in when emptying at the top there. That releases the vacuum from the unit. Clean it out, screw the tap on, push it back in and then click that just in place there. This is also a handle that extends for pulling along when you're going to empty it. So that is your toilet locker area. I will send a separate video on how to use the awning and it's a full awning just for your own uh, re reference. Into the rear of the vehicle, so we've got locker areas on both sides. Again, one key to open it and that will give you access into the floor area where you can see your carpets are stored at the minute. We tend to put the carpets down on the handover. We've got a light switch as well in there, so once the power's on you can turn and you can see items in there should you need it. Uh, we've got your awning pole and behind there we've got the toolkit that comes from Fiat. Towards the back of the vehicle, we've got your window, this is a rear lounge model and we've got your reversing camera up there. On this side also, we have a locker area that lifts up. So once we, again, just click and you'll hear a defined click, open it up and you've got a little door stair which will hold it upright in place. And again, you'll see you've got access in this area and that is your toolkit as I mentioned on the other side. Forward of that, we've got fridge vents at the bottom and at the top. You can get additional covers for them if you wish. And then we've got your gas area. So this has got a gas low fit system fitted to it. And we've got the filler port on the outside. So again, we're gonna click this to open it. And then on opening it up, again, it has a door retainer. We have a two 11 kilo system. We've also got a changeover valve, so you can change the angle that the bottle's going. You'll see there's a little diamond on, and you turn it to the bottle that you want to use. Simply open up that, and you will see that that will go green as it's gone there. When it runs out, it will go red. And when you're turning off the gas, you just simply turn it off that way. Filling it up, uh, you f it fills up both bottles at the same time. You, don't, you can either have the valves in the closed or in the open position doesn't matter you must leave these little drop vents behind free of any obstructions so that the gas will escape downwards on the vehicle to the right hand side of that you will see that there is a sticker this is for your wastewater and it comes out of that gray plastic pipe there the little metal pipe is where you will put your drain key to empty the wastewater so you turn it quarter of a turn and it comes out of the actual gray plastic pipe that can be found just on the little bracket here. So that is the key that you will use for draining the wastewater. To the right hand side of this service locker area, we have your flue for your heater. And we also have your mains plug-in point which sits nicely into the recess there. And there is a little cutout in the valve here. So this area you can lock just manually like that. And that would allow the door to be opened when you're on site. If you want to completely lock it, then you will see that there is a little red band at the top. You turn the key in and push it in. It stays flush and that will lock it completely. To open it again, quarter of a turn and that will open it. And that is the same key as well. On here, we've got the filler spout. So that literally goes onto here and will allow you to fill up your fresh water. Once it overflows with that in place, it will overflow outside of the vehicle. We've also got an ac access hatch there if you want to clean, or if you maybe you've dropped anything in there, you can gain access to it. And then at the top, this is your drain and filler point. So to drain it, you need to turn that wheel anti-clockwise. To fill it up, you need to turn it clockwise. Now you'll hear a click just there. 
that will allow you to fill the tank up to the 20 litres. Carry on going, and again, we only do this till it's finger tight. That will allow you to fill the tank up to 120 litres. Now, the tank is transparent, so you can see it filling up, and you also have gauges inside the vehicle as well. Two other important things in here is you have your water drain valve, which is here. So in the up position, it's draining the water out of the vehicle. To fill it up, you need to flick it down, and it doesn't matter if it's that way or facing into the vehicle. But down like that needs to be the correct position that you choose. Next to it here, we've got your frost protection valve. So you'll see at the minute that the diamond's pointing to the front and the back, and it's got a little black nipple up in the middle. That is emptying the actual boiler. To fill the boiler up, you'll need to turn that in, and you'll see that that little nipple will go down, and then press that button in at the bottom. Now it is crucial that you do both stages, and when you empty it, the bottom button will pop out automatically. If you do this, it will still leak out the vehicle, so you've got to press that in. Now there are occasions where that little blue button will not press in, and you'll see there's a little sticker on the actual unit itself, between four and six degrees. If this is the case, you'll need to run your heating for a little period of time, you'll see you've got heater pipe in here, which will then allow you to press that button in. If you forget to do any of those, then water will come out of them three points. So fresh water, frost protection valve, and drain valve directly under the vehicle itself. So, pop that in place, and let's move round through to your diesel filler cap. So this is located just here uses the Fiat key and there is no add blue on this facility, just diesel, clearly marked just on your cap there. Into the van itself, it comes with a tyre inflation kit and you've got your Fiat manuals. The carpet in the cab area will hide where the engine battery location is and that is located underneath there, so that's where your engine battery is located. Underneath the passenger seat you will have all your electrical fuses, items that you will need to check if you lose power. So just pull that down, slide it out, and that will give you access to all your fuses, or what we classify as your e-box, so under the passenger seat. The seat itself also has a backrest adjuster, armrest adjusters, and your height adjusters, which just open out to lift up the front or the back of the vehicle. The bonnet release catch is just there, and that will lift up the actual engine bonnet itself. The vehicle's fitted with electric window switches on both sides and comes complete with the Remish cab blinds on all front windows, passenger, driver and here along your main windscreen window. So nice and easy, just be gentle with them, don't try and force anything to close it. Under the bonnet it's located just above the badge and you'll see there's a little yellow switch there. We've got clearly marked your oil and your dipstick, your screen wash in the corner, your negative point, which is just this little silver point here, and underneath that little cap down here is your positive point should you ever need to jump start the vehicle at all. So easily clearly marked, should you need to know where they are. So let's move on inside the vehicle, or at least getting into it. Again, the door works off central locking, so once you open it, it will open all the cab doors and the habitation door. You can manually close it by pressing that button in and open it again by doing that. We've got a blind and we've got a fly screen and we've also got a bin with a little dustpan and brush just in the top of it there. The step works with the switches just next to the door. So press the switch down and that will put the step in. Press the step up and you press and hold it and that will put the step back up for you when you're driving. We've also got two separate lights, which are your welcoming lights for the awning light above the door and the big strip light on the awning. These work independent of the power. And you've also, the next button along is your welcome light above the door. So now we're in the vehicle, we'll need to put power on to the main control panel. So we've got the main control panel. So you'll see that there's an indicator in the middle of the control panel to say that we are plugged into mains, which we currently are. To turn the power onto the unit, you need to press this button to the left hand side and it will illuminate the power button at the side. That will turn on all the power to the vehicle, so it is important that you do that. It will also turn on power to the head unit in the double din unit. 
should you not have used the vehicle for any length of time. We have an indicator that tells us how much power is in the leisure battery and then one that tells us how much power is in the engine battery. To the right hand side will also tell us how much uh, level is in the water tank. It's empty at the moment but it will indicate on this side on a probe system. We've also got an indicator to tell us that we've turned on the water pump and again only have this running when you've got water in the vehicle. And then lastly an indicator to tell us what the level is in the waste tank. So pretty straightforward and easy to work out. But the main thing is that you turn your power on and that if you want your water you need to turn your water pump on. Once you've filled up your fresh water tank and you've turned the pump on and you've shut the valves that I mentioned earlier in the video, you'll need to come to your taps, which are clearly marked on the top, turn them to the hot side, lift up the tap and it will automatically turn on the pump. Now at the beginning you'll get a steady stream of water with probably air in it so it will spit and spurt. Run it until you've got a steady stream of water and do that both in the kitchen and in the bathroom area as well as the shower. You'll see in the bathroom area that they're clearly marked just on the end and just underneath the tap when you lift it up just there. Pull it through on all systems and then you'll find it easy to actually uh, get the air out of the system. Once you've got a steady stream of water and you know the boiler's full, you can come to your control panel. Now with your Truma control panel, it's very important that you turn the gas on and plug in the electric before you turn this unit on it will stop any undue error cords arriving. Now you'll see that there's also a mains plug-in point to tell you that the mains is onto the unit as well. So you've now got two indicators to tell you that. To get into the menu, you just press the button and it will light up your options just above here. So we've got four main options and we navigate it using the little wheel at the bottom. So you'll see as you turn the wheel, it will flash on a different icon. The first option being the heating. So how hot or cold you want it to be in the vehicle. Turn the dial to the desired temperature and then press the button in and that will select the temperature that you want it. The next one I go to is the fuel source. So at the minute we're okay because we're on electric. But that's why I say to you it's important you turn both on if you're trying to select it because sometimes it defaults to gas and it will lock out the system. So EL2 basically is 2 kilowatts electric. EL1 is 1 kilowatt electric. Mix 2 is a mixture of gas and 2 kilowatt and you should see now that the symbols are changing above the line. Mix 1 is 1 kilowatt electric and gas. And then finally, the gas option. Now, once you press the button in, it will select that option that you've done above the line, as you see just there. The next option, if we have water, then we would go to the water temperature and we would either select Eco, which is a 40 degree setting and a slow option. Hot, which is a 60 degree option. And then Boost. So what Boost will do is take all the power away from the heating to get the water up to temperature as quick as possible. If we want to heat the hot water and the heating at the same time, we'll need to select that onto hot and never select it and turn it on. If you haven't got water in the system, you can still run your heating without water in there. So to get the heater pumping, you want to then go to the fan at the end and select either eco, which is a slow setting, high, which is a fast setting, and then again, once you've selected the high option, give the system about a minute or two until the fan starts. You'll then be able to go back into that and you'll be able to select the boost function, which will just purely take all the power to get the heating up to temperature as quick as possible. Now, you'll see on the menu itself, there are an option at the bottom to do timer settings, to reset the actual clock itself. You'll need to set this every time you do it. And then the, the little spanner option. So if you turn it round to the spanner, so it flashes and press into it, you have some more options. The main option being the reset option. So should you forget to turn your gas or electric on or it comes up with an error code, it may tell you to reset the system. So go into the reset, press it once, press the reset, preset again, and that will reboot your button. Very similar to you restarting your phone. If there is an issue with this unit, it will come up with your fault code. All your fault codes are in the manuals. If you're still having an issue, give our technicians a call here in the office. Above it is a little thermostat. So that's where the temperature's got to reach before it gets cold or hot or turns off the fan. And to turn the unit off, press and hold that middle button until it tells you that it's off. 
Now again, just like I mentioned at the start, when you've got to put your electric and your gas on, turn this unit off before you then unplug and turn off your gas. Again, that will stop any faults occurring on the vehicle. So that's the fundamentals of how to use the vehicle. Let's have a walk around the vehicle and have a look. So we've got some additional light switches now we've put power on, which do the ambient lighting here above the kitchen and the spotlight's just there. You have a separate couple of switches which also do the same. The little down lights are all removable, twist to remove. You can then fit them in a different location and twist back on. They'll also lift up as well, just like that. And they're dotted around the vehicle, wherever you want. To turn them off, you, like I mentioned, you've just got a switch just there. We have two traveling seat belts. They can be stored away as they are here and just lifted over, or you can have them in front of it when your passengers are traveling. Just lift up the headrest and then pull the seat belts over the covers. The table will lift up. You'll see there's a little red little lug there and you'll see as I lift it up, it will lift up. You lift that off completely if you want to do that and it also will extend by pulling down the little lever here, just like so, and that will extend the table so anyone sitting in this side seat can then use the table. We've got spacers underneath and you simply just push that down and that will open it up. Underneath this one is where you will find your manual winding uh, point. Should the motor go on the electric, so your power goes to the electric, you can wind this bed down manually and also wind it up manually. So that's located just to the left hand side. Right hand side we've got some storage. Storage are on the front and this front one has got a fly screen and a blind. Same as all the others. And it will open as well by opening up the window stays. These ones just have little push ones at the top. So you're going to push it in the middle. And then it will open up. Twist the little tabs at the bottom. And that will hold it up. Please do not travel with that open. As it is likely to flow away when you're moving. Please lock it in place. The front bed. You will need to put the key in the front bed. And this is located just in this area here. So you can leave the keys in for both of the beds. And you have a couple of keys for each one. So put the key in, twist it. And then when you want to operate the bed, you'll just press it down and then up. One thing you must remember is to fold this seat down before you put it all the way down and make sure there's no obstructions underneath. So once down in the position, it will stop. Your ladder's hook onto there. You've got your own lights. Now these lights push in. So just push in the center to turn on, push in the center to turn off. Underneath the bed, we've got safety nets that go on the front side, as we're looking at here, and on the back side to stop anyone from falling out. You've got these little eyelets, which you hook them into, and the two at the front are either side of that roof light. So quite simple, very comfortable, lots of room and non-claustrophobic. You've got a roof light, and that roof light there works the same as the one in the kitchen area. So it has a fly screen and a blind. And to open it, we press down the button, pull the handle up, and ventilate the vehicle just like so. Close it, you literally put it up there. You've also got another couple of settings that you can have it in a lower position and a locking point should you want to do that. That is the same in on the bed underneath at the rear, the middle kitchen one, and the one underneath the actual bed itself. Into the kitchen area, you've got your sink and your chopping board. We've got a three burner hob with an igniter. So one, two, three, just be careful to let it cool down before you close it. The blinds on all the windows are exactly the same. So fly screen and blinds. Just like that, blinds up from the bottom, fly screens down from the top. And again, the windows work the same in the kitchen as it did on the front one. The side one here works a little bit differently in the fact that it is the same fly screen and blind. But now it has a different locking mechanism to open it up. Still the posh for the actual handles. But when you're opening it, just you'll hear it click. So gently up, yeah. And then to close it, you've got to go all the way up to come all the way back down. 
So be careful if you're storing it next to a wall or a fence. Make sure that you don't open that window before you're setting off. You'll have to open it all the way to close it. Back in the kitchen, we've got your isolation valves for your gas. Now, as you see it at the moment here now, this is in the full working order. So if you're ever worried about what position, revert back to this video, that position that you see there is how they should be. Below that, we've got the little winding handle and a peg for tying it down. So that is your winding handle for the bed, as I mentioned earlier in the video. And again, storage just there. Kitchen area, you've got your utensils. You've also got the push button here, which releases the larder that pulls out. So good storage area for bottles or larger items. A couple of hooks and a towel rail there as well. And underneath that, we have got the access to the RCD. So this is like your main RCD breaker at home. You have a test button just on the top. So if you don't think you're getting power to the vehicle, just press that button. And if you're hooked up to mains, it will drop that breaker down. If you press that and nothing happens, there's something wrong with the feed coming to the vehicle. So check your mains cable or the post that you're plugged into. So nice, easy way of working that one out. Above that, we've got your oven and your grill. And again, you'll see it's clearly marked oven grill. Grill that way, make sure you open the door and oven that way. Once you press it in, you'll hear the igniter and you've got a light button that gives you a little light to see what's happening in there. In the middle position is just off. <laughs> to the side of that, we've got another storage compartment underneath. And then we've got the fridge. So the handle just opens just like so. And then it's a Dometic unit. So we've got four main options. Press the unit on and it will light up. The freezer compartment, just push that to get into the freezer compartment and then close it to close it. Above are your options that are available to you. So you've got gas. You've got, by pressing it, 12 volt. Now this will only work when the engine's running and it's a feed from the alternator to give you cooling power whilst you're driving. Not when you're stationary and the engine's off. The next option is a manually selected electric. So you choose which one you want, electric, gas, or 12 volt, or you can press automatic. Now you'll see when I press the automatic, it's gone straight back to electric. It will always search the strongest source of power that you're plugged into. So if you're hooked up to mains, it'll, it'll do electric. If you're plugged onto gas, it will go to gas. If you pull out the electric and you've got your gas on, it will automatically search and find your gas. Uh, and once you start up your engine, it will go then to your alternator option. So depends on you whether you want to do it manually or auto. You'll see there's a little sticker here telling you about where the gas reset is. So it will go to gas failure if uh, if your gas is not turned on. Also it does this as well when you station rain, turn off the 12 volt. It, there is a wait for 10 minutes. So you might need to turn the unit off for 10 minutes. If you're stopped at a fuel station or stopped at the side of the road, you can turn the unit off and then give it a couple of minutes and turn it back on if you want to do it. Well, that's the reset button just there. We've also then got a temperature setting, so from the warmest to the coldest setting. So just see how your food's going in there. Always try and put your food in at the temperature that, uh, that it's required. So if you've got a fridge and a freezer at home, put your bits in there first. And then when you're going on your trip, just put them straight across. To turn it off, just press and hold the button. The light goes off, it clearly indicates that the unit is closed. Close the door, just press the door and it will lock just in place there. Above here, we've got a storage unit, nice and neatly up there. And again, just make sure that they're pressed in place uh, when you're uh, moving away. We've got light switches into the lower spotlights. So what we call your night lights. And then we've got your main ambient lighting and your main light in that rear bed area. So in here again, we've got your decorative sort of curtain blinds and your fly screens and blinds all work exactly the same way pulling them up for your blinds and down for your fly screens on the rear area again similar to the front all the cupboards open by pressing the handles nice and neatly there and as i mentioned on the front one you've got a mechanism to drop it manually should you want to do that on dropping this bed down just make sure that they're just turned up and not down just to give you a bit of clearance and then you'll need to move the cushions on putting the bed down so i always do it in 
the same way, but there's no actually defined way of doing it. I just put the cushions down just nice and neatly here. This one doesn't need to go completely down, it's just as long as it's out of the way of the bed. And then the bed key location is just there next to your light switches. So again, pop your key in, turn it, press the button, and then that will navigate the bed down. So the bed will look, come all the way down. If you have forgot to put your cushions or something stopping it underneath, then just find out what that is, move it, and take that obstruction out of the way. The bottom of the cupboard here, we've got a little step, which will just then slide out and give you an access point up onto that rear bed area. It also doubles up as a storage unit, so you can put items in there. And to pop it back in, you've just got to press that little button and then it will slide back in out of the way. Just like so. Again, making sure that you press that button in. Wardrobe area. So in here, the customer's added the sat-nav unit and the box is in there for both the sat-nav and the two TVs. Also comes with an aerial and this has a little booster box that you need to turn on and off. And then to move the aerial, you release this little collar, push it up to get a better signal. If it's green, you're getting a good signal. It's not going to be, make any benefit to whether you push that up or not. If it's amber or red, you might need to change the location of, of the pole. And inside there is all your manuals and booklets that come with the vehicle. There's also a little light in there, just need your battery putting in to give you an extra light if you want to in your wardrobe area. So, putting the bed back up. Again, sorry guys, just missing as it's going back up. You've got the pushing lights as well, just there. And the safety nets that go on the front on the back side as well. So, similar to the front, again, just making sure that you move your cushions, making sure that them lights are in the up position, nice and neatly, just there. And again, through winter, what we'll tell you to do is just drop the bed down a bit, to give it ventilation, and you can see that you've got your opening roof light just above there. Same as I mentioned earlier in the video. Nice and neat. So, putting them back. So the long one goes in this side, and then just goes along. Now, a little pointer, you'll see that the pipes are cut all the way along. This isn't a fault. It's actually to allow the heat to go around the vehicle nice and neatly and distribute in an even manner. So it isn't a fault, guys. It's just an actual design idea that Burstner do to incorporate the heating slightly better. We've got storage areas just in here. And again, make sure that these are clicked before you go in transit. And again, just in here. And on this side here, we've got the little table that just pops out. And then the lever just underneath here lifts up and springs out into place for your items. Now this customer has added a rear TV. So this is the Abtec TV. And there is also a TV in the front of the vehicle. Just there. The front one's a fully mounted one, so you can leave that in place. We do advise that you remove the TV in the rear just for traveling. Pop it under your cushions just here. Uh, and it is a, just a lift off and lift on item. We've got a mains plug just down here. And we have the ladders for the front bed just located there. Underneath the carpets, we have the four storage areas. So I'll just demonstrate and show you those. So they literally just lift up and give you access underneath the floor area. There's one in the kitchen area and one as you enter the vehicle, just in front of the actual step itself. So, bathroom area, we've got your toilet. Now the toilet itself has a little valve, a blade valve. That's got to be in the closed position to pull out the toilet cassette. And you do that by closing it towards the front of the vehicle, opening it towards the rear. So must be in that position, just forward for you to pull your toilet cassette out. We've got your flush button, which is the blue button, and an indicator to tell you that you're plugged into main, uh, when it's full, just at the left-hand side. Underneath here is where you turn off the light for the bathroom area. So light and shower, and then you've got a main plug point just in there. A indicator just in here for your items, so you can put all your belongings. And again, just remember that is closed. 
Got a towel rail hook just there. Make sure the turnbuckle's in place for transit for the screen. And you've got two plugs there, so it doesn't matter which way the vehicle's angled, it will dra drain into the front of the back side. Underneath, we've got a little cut out here. Is that where your toilet roll will go? And there is a vent opening there, which also has a blind in it for cutting out that light in the daytime. A couple of hooks for your dressing gowns or your uh, towels as well, just there. So that's that bit completed. Moving into the cab area, you'll see that the seats swivel round nice and neatly. And you can release these with the little handles when they're in the forward position, position by just pulling them back. The seats move forward and backwards with the bar just underneath the seat here. So pretty easy to navigate in that respect. And we've got the cup holders just there. You've got your locking button. Let me just close that side blind. We've got your hazard lights, lock button. It doesn't have the heated uh, rear window. It's for the option on the vans. Hill descent, traction plus. We're on a six speed manual gearbox. We also have the uh, speed limiter control and the cruise control. Again, three positions, the middle position being off. Your indicator lights on the right hand side, your windscreen wipers and a trip counter to the right of the steering wheel. Underneath this panel here is where you will find some uh, fuses for the Fiat side of it. And we've got your mode buttons for changing the time on the actual Fiat side of it and some of your options there as well as your fog lights. And an indicator to tell you if you forgot to put that step in just there. We have an isolator button just to the left hand side of the button at the steering wheel, just here, which will turn on and off the actual head unit. This head unit is a Pioneer unit and has also got the upgraded navigation system that's been added to it. Navigation's not standard on these. So we have DAB and normal radio. We have a CD option on here. So you press the little button here for the CD. Open that out and the CD will come out of the top just there if there is one. To close it, if you're not putting a CD in, press the same button just to close it. We've got a microphone for the Bluetooth just here as well. And your navigation option, which is just on here. You'll need to give time to load up. Well, it's loading up. We've got the option here for your phone or tablet holder. So... Just release the little handle at the side and then open it up, press it back in and close it back down. We've also got your uh, air conditioned uh, glove box area there, passenger airbag and another glove box underneath, as well as a jack point and a USB charging point and a cold coin holder just there. So the nav unit will just, like I say, take a few minutes to load up. But once it's loaded up, you can then put your vehicle specific details into it so length height width things like that uh, the postcodes work off that you can work off coordinates as well but the vehicle will be set up with the correct length and details in there you also got a manual in that box in the rear which shows you how to use that the tellies pretty simple they have an on off button just swing that around just on the end here which turns it on and off You'll see there's a little indicator on underneath when you are plugged into mains uh, or on 12 volt. I've hooked this up as a 12 volt option, which you can do when you're then hooked up to mains or you're not hooked up to mains. It doesn't matter. And then simply, I'll show you how to tune the TVs in. So the tele itself will have a little indicator underneath. You test the button on and it will change its colour to blue. That will tell you that it is actually coming on. Then to tune the TV in itself, you will need to go to menu on your option. So we'll probably tune in automatically, but let's show you. So menu on your option, go down then using the little arrows to that function just there. It's like a little satellite and then go on to your auto seat function. Press the OK button and that will then allow you to select the country that you're in. And then once you press the country that you're in, it will load up your TV. Same on both of the TVs. 
So just let that tune in and that will bring up the relevant pictures for you. Turn it off, you can just press the button off again and it will go off or you can press the button in at the end just on here to completely turn off that little indicator underneath. So pretty simple on the tellies. Back to the nav now, the nav is loaded up and we've got your options there of find my routes, last places, whatever you want it to do. You just put your address in and then in the town button, you can either enter the town or the postcode that you want to do. So pretty simple on that side of it to go through the setup on the actual unit itself. You'll need to go into the settings options and then there is either a option through on here where you can then choose your vehicle that you want to do. And again, it's all touch screen, so it will just go down right at the... Oops. There we go. Right at the bottom there, you'll see there's a setup wizard. On the setup wizard, this is where you can choose your, your person that's speaking, your length, your width, your heights, and your proximity options that you want to travel with. I hope that makes this handover video easy for you to follow. I understand. We look forward to your comments, but most importantly, we look forward to you enjoying your new Motoron. Thank you.